Hi, everyone. Uh, my name is Yi, and I am a neuroscience major, and I'm very excited and honored to be able to share with you today my Woodrow Wilson research project on how targeting hippocampal dysfunction can improve cognitive impairments in a schizophrenia model. Now, before I get into the details, uh, I first want to share with you a bit how I became interested and involved with this project. So during my senior year of high school, often for AP Biology extra credit, I often read up on popular articles covering recent discoveries um, in the brain sciences. And one of those works was actually about the recent studies by Dr. Michaela Gallagher and her lab here at Homewood campus. Now, before starting college, I knew that I w wanted um, a in-depth research project that I could really sink my teeth into. And once I joined Dr. Gallagher's lab, the Wilson Fellowship has really allowed me to pursue this dream and provided me with all the support that I have needed as I investigate uh, this new therapeutic strategy for treating the memory impairment associated with schizophrenia. Now, as many of you probably know, schizophrenia is a severe and chronic mental disorder that affects how an individual thinks, feels, and behaves. There are several different kinds of uh, different categories of symptoms. A positive symptom describes a feature that a patient newly acquires, such as psychosis or hallucinations whereas a negative symptom describes a feature that the patient has lost, such as uh, an appropriate response to emotional stimuli. And finally, there are also serious cognitive problems, such as memory impairment. Now, most patients today are treated with antipsychotic medication and behavioral therapy, but unfortunately, most of these drugs overlook targeting the cognitive problems with schizophrenia, and thus patient quality of life often remains very low. So our project <clears throat> excuse me, was particularly interested in targeting the memory outcome and improving these outcomes for patients. Interestingly, human neuroimaging has revealed that in these individuals, there is a significant overexcitability in a region of the brain called the hippocampus. Now, the hippocampus, which is pictured here in red, is the brain region most associated with learning and memory consolidation, that is, converting short-term memory into long-term memory. And since the hippocampus displays overactivity in schizophrenic patients, we hypothesized that calming down this hyperactivity could, in turn, improve the memory performance. And one therapeutic strategy would be to use anti-epileptic anti agents, which are known in epilepsy patients, to reduce overexcitability. So the anti-epileptic treatment that we selected was levetiracetam. Now, before we could assess the efficacy of this strategy in human patients, we first needed to test in animals. So we chose a schizophrenia animal model we induced schizophrenia-like symptoms via a ketamine exposure model. Many of you have probably heard of ketamine, and what makes ketamine interesting is that it modulates the same key brain chemicals that appear to go haywire in schizophrenia. And not surprisingly, human ketamine abusers show very similar symptoms as human schizophrenics. So in order to verify that we established a successful schizophrenia animal model, we tested our ketamine-exposed animals on a radial arm maze task, which was actually developed here at Hopkins about 40 years ago by Professor David Olton. And this task is especially good at assessing spatial hippocampal-dependent memory. So what I have here on the screen is a schematic, um, an aerial view of the radial arm maze, as you can see, the radial arm maze has eight arms that extend from a central platform. And at the end of each arm is a food reward. Any of these arms can be uh, blocked by a barrier. So on the screen, we have a little rat running around the radial arm maze trying to find the food rewards at the end of each arm. So this task involves two phases. Now during the first phase, which is called the informational phase or study phase, there are three arms blocked, and the animal, 
then retrieves the food rewards from the open five arms, observing which arms it has visited based on the visual cues that is surrounding the maze. Then after a delay, the animal is returned back to the maze, and it is up to the animal to now recall which three arms it has not previously previously explored because those three arms will now be baited. So during the test phase, all of the arms are open and the animal has to identify the three arms that are still baited. Anytime an animal re-enters an arm that it visited during the information phase is considered an error. So as expected, after a three hour delay interval between the information phase and the testing phase, ketamine exposed animals produced more errors than the control animals on the radial arm maze. Now we were interested to see whether our treatment of interest, levetiracetam, could improve the number of errors produced by the ketamine-exposed animals. And this is what we found. Okay, so what I have here is a graph that depicts the number of errors uh, committed by our ketamine animals in black bars and control animals in white bars against the dosage of levetiracetam treatment drug that we administered. And if you focus right now at uh, the zero milligrams per kilogram of levetiracetam, you'll notice that as expected, the ketamine exposed animals have many more errors than our control animals. However, as the dosage increases, the number of errors that they commit decrease. And then at an optimal concentration of 10 milligrams per kilogram of levetiracetam, there was statistically no difference produced between the ketamine animals and the control animals. So these results were very promising, but we were also interested to see if levetiracetam could improve another feature of schizophrenia. Now, uh, I'm going to return to this image. You'll notice that uh, the hippocampus sends outputs to another part of the brain called the ventral tegmental area, also known as the VTA, which is highlighted here in orange. For patients with schizophrenia, the VTA exhibits an overabundant expression of dopamine, which is a key brain chemical linked to the positive symptoms of schizophrenia, such as psychosis and hallucinations. Now, one of the drugs that modulates this dopamine, thank you. <laughs> One of the drugs that modulates this dopamine system is amphetamine, to which schizophrenic patients and animal models are particularly sensitive, and that manifests in them as a physical hyperactivity. So given our understanding of the hippocampal VTA loop, we hypothesized that perhaps calming down the hippocampal hyperactivity with levetiracetam could in turn regulate and remedy the overexpression of dopamine in the VTA. So the way we tested this was by administering amphetamine to our ketamine animals in an activity chamber, which is pictured here, and observing how their locomotor hyperactivity would change in response to the levetiracetam treatment. So our data, this is our behavioral data, and what we're looking at here on the y-axis is the total, average total distance our animals, our ketamine exposed animals moved um, in, as a measure of their hyperactivity. Um, and animals that are placed in the activity chamber quickly become habituated and sedentary, so you see a sharp decrease in their activity. Then when we had administered amphetamine, the ketamine exposed animals have a sharp increase in their hyperactivity. But what we found is that ketamine exposed animals who received levetiracetam, which is represented by the dark circles, they uh, displayed uh, less hyperactive behavior and thus they were less sensitive to the amphetamine, suggesting that this drug levetiracetam is also able to affect the imbalanced expression of dopamine. Now, finally, I would like to return to this image again. Our goal for this project was to ameliorate the memory impairment associated with schizophrenia that we know arises from hippocampal hyperactivity. However, given our knowledge of the hippocampus and its outputs to other important parts of the brain, including the VTA, it is possible that levetiracetam could modulate not only the cognitive, but also the positive symptoms of schizophrenia. Uh, before I conclude, I would like to say uh, deepest appreciation to 
my mentors, Dr. Michaela Gallagher and Dr. Ming Tang Ho, who have taught me so much in the past four years and have been so patient with me in this project. I would also like to thank uh, Amy Cox, Professor Stephen David, and uh, Leslie Loving, and my parents uh, for their never-ending support. I really appreciate it, and thank you for listening.